Welcome to the CTB Lunch Break. I am Kyle High, and with me today we have a special guest. It is Senator James Inhofe. Mr. Inhofe, how are you doing this morning? We're doing great, Kyle, and, and welcome to your job. You know, it's the first time that you and I have talked, and we'll make this a regular thing because uh, of our five major military establishments since I've been kind of the acting chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, and I, I make it a point to be there uh, probably once a month to stay on top of the things that are going on. And then this next week, we have the city of Enid coming to Washington. So uh, we'll probably want to talk after that, too. So welcome aboard. I look forward to, to visiting with you. I thank you for the kind words, Mr. Inhofe. A uh, couple questions here just for you. Mr. Inhofe, you recently visited the U.S.-Mexico border and you said you will introduce new legislation concerning immigration. Could you go into a little more detail about what's going to go into oh, that bill? Absolutely, I, I can, Kyle. And I think we should, I don't say this critically of our former president, Barack Obama. He was a proud liberal. He was not strong for the military. Our military suffered just horribly under him. But one of the things that he did uh, was he was encouraging people, illegals, to come into the United States. I think we all know that. In fact, he specifically encouraged people to come from Honduras or wherever they're coming from uh, uh, through Mexico and into our southern border. He had a system that was set up where the Border Patrol would uh, merely catch someone who was illegal and assign them to a center that was, uh, where they would feed them and nurse them back to good health, and then they somehow just disappeared, and they became integrated in our society. Well, that's something that a year ago I started working on. Uh, Kyle, you have no way of knowing this, but for a number of years I was a builder and developer down in South Texas, and I know that territory down there. I know the border, and I, I'm very familiar with it. Well, I went down to these centers and found out they didn't have any accountability to the people after they're once assigned to them. I worked with the Border Patrol. Uh, this is just two weeks ago, and uh, and they we have a, we're doing two things legislatively. First, when they are assigned to a center, have a uh, have, we keep track of them. We don't lose them. And the second thing is, before they can come in, uh, the, the old system was they would come in and then they would assign them a court date, maybe three weeks from that time. And of course, they'd never show up in court. But we're going to set it up now where we don't allow them to come across until they meet a court date if it becomes necessary to adjudicate a, a case. So uh, we're coming a long ways. And, uh, you know, I'm a strong supporter of the of the um, very controversial wall that the president's building down there. And I don't think people realize that, you know, you've got to, uh, to have something up there because and it's going to be a lot cheaper to do that cover that with a wall than with the additional people that we'd need to have on the border the border patrol and it's something we need to do they we have drugs coming across we have uh, uh dangerous people terrorists and uh and so that's that's one of the projects we're working on good sounds like good stuff there mr Inoff. uh could you also give us a <coughs> thought on the upcoming talks between president trump and kim jong un i'm very excited about this because I, just by coincidence, I was in North Korea when the incident happened, uh, when King, well, on November 28th, they fired a rocket uh, from uh, North Korea. Kim Jong-un was, uh, came out after that and said, we now know that we can range. I mean, we can hit Enid, Oklahoma from, uh, from uh, North Korea. And uh, he made the statement, he said, we could hit, and we'll, we'll hit an American city, uh, from uh, from North Korea, uh, I have a button. Remember, he made that statement, and then along uh, came oh, our president. His response immediately was, "Yeah, and we've got a button too. Ours is bigger than yours. Ours works. Yours doesn't. If you try that, we'll blow you off the face of this earth." Now, that's the kind of talk that you get out of this president, not this appeasing type of talk that we uh, became used to for a while. Now, did that work? Yeah, it was within an hour after that, uh, Kyle, that the the uh, 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 King Jun Un called South Korea and said, well, we've changed our minds. We are going to send athletes down to be in the Winter Olympics. Then he contacted South Korea's leadership and said, I'm going to sit down and talk. And he has now uh, contacted our president, and they have two things set up, one with uh, between North and South Korea coming up this month, 
And then next month, it'll, uh, but the date's not certain yet, he's going to have the meeting with the president. So I look at that as a major, major breakthrough. I've, I've said, now you haven't been here all that long, but I've been saying for a long period of time, we're in the most dangerous position we've been in as a country because it's no longer just a conventional warfare. This is something where other countries, you know, what one country has, if, if Iran has it, then Yemen's going to have it and other countries are going to have it. And they're de- rapidly developing that capability of, uh, of being able to reach the United States. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have a, a new sheriff in town. We're now starting to rebuild our military. Certainly, if you have any question about that, you could call anyone out there at, at Vance, and they'll tell you what happened to the military during the, the eight years of Obama. And things have turned around now, and I'm very excited about that. And it's also a good thing that uh, hopefully cooler heads are prevailing in all this, and we can make sure we don't have, uh, you know, war breaking out all over the place. Well, uh, you're right, Kyle, because that's and that's and that's a real thing. This this thing that the, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be hitting Syria any minute now, uh, but we're not doing it alone. We now have the free world behind us. We, we had lost our position as the leader of the free world. Because if you'll remember, just by comparison, uh, during the Obama administration, when they were using chemical weapons in Syria, he made the statement that we now have drawn a line. We have a red line. You can't cross the red line and we would do, you know, be dire circumstances. Well, uh, Syria just crossed the red line and it doesn't happen. Now, that doesn't happen with this president. And so you, uh, we've kind of been reestablished as that leader in the free world. And I know, look... Trump is abrasive. I agree. <laughs> I, I cringe when he comes out with, uh, with a lot of his tweets, uh, but he backs up what he says. Look at regulations. Our biggest problem to our economy during the eight years of Obama was the over-regulations. If you don't believe it, talk to any of the farmers who are listening to us right now. The WOTUS of a regulation that would transfer the jurisdiction of water from the states to the federal government, which would mean uh, from from uh, Enid out west, it gets pretty arid, but that would be a wetland in the, in the eyes of the federal government. So you'd have another whole bureaucracy crawling all over our farms. So uh, we, if any of your people would like to know what this president has done in terms of the over-regulations that came with, uh, with the Obama administration, go to my website, inhoff.senate.gov, and we just pull up a – we have a, a list that we are continuing to build. We're up to 70 rules and regulations that came that were very harmful during the Obama administration that we've either eliminated or in the process of doing it. And so uh, uh, some of these things th- – these are the good things. And people who are listening to us right now, they understand that. They understand that, Kyle, because uh, the overregulation is a killer. Look, talk to your bankers. Any bankers that you have there uh, in Enid, uh, just let them know that or, uh, that uh, uh, the the the, uh, the Dodd Frank legislation that came during the Obama administration it treats that forces our community banks to be treated like giant banks. In fact, right now the Community Banking Association is in Washington from Oklahoma, and they are they were in my office yesterday. They were celebrating. Because we passed the bill, it required a bill to get away with these regulations. We passed it in the Senate while they were still here. And, uh, and so that's a great thing. But it doesn't matter what business you're in or if you're a farmer or if you're a banker. Overregulation is overregulation, and that's what was killing America. Now, as a result of that, we have increased our economic activity. It averaged 1.5% a year for eight years under Obama. It's well over 3% now, which is is just huge. So good times are are coming. And by the way, I think I mentioned that Enid will be here in Washington. Tell any of the Enid people that are coming in that group this, this coming week, I look forward to visiting with them. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Inoff. We appreciate you coming on, and we hope to make this a uh, somewhat semi-regular thing. Going no, on. I, that we'll definitely do that. Right, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you very much, Mr. Inoff. You have a great day. Yeah, same to you.